Is that everything? Well, let's see. Looks like your 4 my 9 is complete. Let's just review it one more time to make sure. Okay. Name, maiden name, date of birth. Yes, yes, that's all correct. Good. What about your supporting documentation? Well, my green card is still under my maiden name. So here's my driver's license and my social security card. Well, great. Looks like everything's in order then. Now, before I send you back to work, this is your third day. Yes, it is. Well, welcome aboard. Thanks. As I was saying, the last thing we're going to do is check your employment eligibility through E-Verify. Are you familiar with E-Verify? Well, somewhat, I guess. I mean, I've seen the posters, but I don't really know anything about it. Okay, why don't we start with a brief overview. This is a scene that's likely to be repeated many times in many workplaces all over the country. You may not yet be familiar with E-Verify, but employers use it to verify whether or not employees, citizens and non-citizens alike, are authorized to work in the United States. E-Verify works by matching worker information with the information in government databases. Hello, I'm Sandra Young. I'm speaking on behalf of the Office for Civil Rights and Civil Liberties at the Department of Homeland Security. During this program, you will learn about E-Verify, what it does, and how it affects you. Specifically, we'll discuss how E-Verify works, the potential outcomes of the process, and individual rights and responsibilities related to it. As we learn more about E-Verify during this program, there are two very important points you should remember. First, workers have specific rights when their employers use E-Verify. For example, Workers have the right to challenge E-Verify's initial determination and the right to keep on working until a final decision is made. Second, it is important for you, the employee, to advocate for yourself throughout the process and be sure to follow through on your responsibilities. To help you with this, please keep and read the handouts that accompany this program. They include important information to help you through the process. All right. Let's see what's going on with our new employee, Ms. Delgado. Okay, let's start with a brief overview of E-Verify. I will enter the information from your Form I-9 into the computer and E-Verify will match it to government databases. If everything checks out, your employment eligibility will be verified in a few seconds. And if it doesn't? Well, if it doesn't, it means that there's a mismatch somewhere that needs to be cleared up. But before we get into that, let me just enter the information into the system. Okay. There are several possible outcomes with E-Verify. In most cases, employees are approved on the spot. In other cases, if the information typed into E-Verify doesn't match the information that the government has on file, a tentative non-confirmation, or TNC, will be issued. If a TNC is received, your employer must give you an opportunity to challenge it and provide written instructions on how to do that. Then it is the employee's responsibility to ensure that any problems are cleared up with the appropriate government agency. But this is important. While the problem is being fixed, the employee has the right to work. The employer cannot restrict his or her hours, pay, or training. The employee may only be terminated if E-Verify returns a final determination that he or she is not authorized to work in the United States. In this case, Ms. Delgado received a TNC. Let's see what happens. All right. Well, unfortunately, a tentative non-confirmation was returned. It appears the information I entered doesn't match with the Social Security Administration's information. I've printed out your TNC notice. I, I don't understand. A tentative non-confirmation or a TNC means there may be a mismatch with the information you provided or that I entered into E-Verify and the information that the Social Security Administration has for you. Now, I double and then triple check the information I entered, so I'm sure there were no typographical errors and I know we rechecked the information on your Form I-9 a couple of times, so I'm confident it wasn't just a mistake in entering the information. Perhaps it has something to do with changing your maiden name to your married name. In any event, all we can do now is go over your TNC notice and talk about your choices and your responsibilities. I, I, don't, I don't know. Will I be fired? No, 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 no. 
it's against the law for employers to take any action against you while you try to clear up the problem. So no, you won't be fired. In fact, if you're scheduled for training... I've already started my training. Ah, that's no problem then. While you work to fix this tentative non-confirmation, you have the right to continue your training and any other job-related tasks. You'll continue to work just as before. And as I mentioned earlier, this information is strictly private. So no one in this company is allowed to talk about it or use it to make decisions about you. That's good to know. I really want this job and I'd hate to start off with a mark against me. Oh, I understand that. But now that you have a TNC, you have to read the TNC notice and make a choice. Either you challenge the TNC and work to solve the problem with the Social Security Administration, or you choose not to and your employment will be terminated immediately, but you will be paid for the time you've worked. Okay. I'm guessing you want to contest it. Yes, absolutely. Well, let me register your choice to contest the TNC with eVerify, and I'll be right back with some additional information. Just give me a minute, okay? Sure. Okay, that's done. I've printed out your eVerify referral letter. The letter contains specific instructions and contact information, everything you need to begin resolving your TNC. You have eight federal work days to contact them to begin resolving this. And as you can see in the letter, you have contact information for Social Security and help numbers you may call. There are also websites with helpful information you may access online. But the important thing is that you understand it is your responsibility to follow up on this because if you don't take any action, we'll be forced to let you go. I, uh, yes, I understand. And it's a good idea to bring your referral letter to the Social Security Administration, along with any other paperwork that may be helpful. Mr. Silva was correct in his explanation. Once a tentative non-confirmation is returned, our employee, Ms. Delgado, has two choices. She can either contest the TNC and contact the appropriate government agency to solve the problem, or she can choose not to contest it, and her employment will be terminated. Ms. Delgado contested the TNC. It is important that she understands it is her responsibility to follow through. She must contact the appropriate agency, here the Social Security Administration, within eight federal workdays, and present any required documentation to resolve the issue. During the time it takes to resolve the TNC, Ms. Delgado has the right to continue her employment with all of the same benefits she received before the tentative non-confirmation was returned. Everything she needs to know at this point is printed on the TNC notice and the e-verify referral letter, contact information, phone numbers, and web addresses. But she must take action to resolve this issue. It is not an option to do nothing if she wishes to continue her employment. How are you doing? Can I get you a glass of water? No, thanks. So, do you understand everything we've talked about? Yes, I think. I understand that somehow my information, the information we sent to E-Verify, does not match the information the Social Security Administration has for me. And I heard what you said about my right to continue to work. And I understand that I need to contact the Social Security Administration to resolve this issue. That it's my responsibility to do this if I want to continue in my job. Yes, it is your responsibility. And everything I need to get started is on this referral letter? It's all right there. And as long as I'm working through this, I can continue in my job. Yes, that's right. But remember, you have to contact the Social Security Administration within eight working days. But the company can't do anything bad to me during this time? That's correct as well. During this time, the company can't keep you from working or going to training, and we can't withhold pay or otherwise limit your employment opportunities. We can't use this information against you in any way unless we get a final non-confirmation. But what if it takes longer than eight days to fix my records? Don't worry, the same rules apply. We're not allowed to treat you any differently during this time. And also, this is a private matter. Even your supervisor won't know that you received a TNC. But if I get a rejection? It's called a final non-confirmation. If you choose to accept the TNC as final or fail to contest it, or if it works out that you get a final non-confirmation, your employment must be terminated immediately. And that's not my choice to make. Does everyone go through this? Every person we hire, both citizens and non-citizens alike, has his or her employment eligibility checked by E-Verify. I see. 
I guess I feel a little better I'm not being singled out. And I know you've seen the posters in the lobby. Yes, they are hard to miss. At first I didn't really understand what either if I was. But now I think I do. I really wish I hadn't received a TNC. But I'll do everything I can to resolve it. Good. What you just saw occurred a few months ago. And let me tell you, it was scary to hear that the job I was so happy to have might be taken away from me just that fast if I couldn't resolve my issues with the Social Security Administration. Fortunately, I sorted everything out. Along the way, however, I learned several things. Employers must use E-Verify on everyone they hire, even U.S. citizens. Employers cannot use E-Verify on job applicants. It can be used only after you have been hired and have completed the Form I-9. Employers must treat all employees equally, and it is against the law for them to discriminate based upon someone's appearance, accent, or citizenship. Further, when you are hired, your employer must let you know that they use E-Verify. That means E-Verify posters have to be in plain view in your workplace. If you get a TNC and decide to challenge it, it is extremely important to understand that your employer cannot take any bad actions against you. Your employer cannot discriminate or retaliate against you for receiving a TNC. That includes firing you, putting you on leave, lowering or withholding your pay, or not letting you take training. Now, if you decide not to contest a TNC or a final non-confirmation is returned, your employment must be terminated immediately. Employers don't have a choice in that matter. If they don't fire you, they may be breaking the law. And the last thing I learned, which was very helpful to me, was that I had many resources to support me. They were listed on the E-Verify referral letter, and a few are being listed here, again on the screen. Thanks for listening. I hope it was helpful. Ms. Delgado made her case and secured her job. She made arrangements within the designated eight-day time frame to contest her TNC by visiting her local Social Security Administration office, and she advocated for herself. She knew her rights, and she accepted her responsibilities. As we come to the end of this program, I'd like to summarize a few important points from today's video. First, you have the right to fair and non-discriminatory treatment when your employer uses E-Verify. This means that you have the right to know your employer is using E-Verify. You have the right to know in a timely manner that your employer received a TNC. You have the right to a written notice explaining that you received a TNC and how to challenge it. And you have the right and responsibility to contact the appropriate federal agency within eight federal workdays to start challenging the TNC. If your employer uses E-Verify, it must be used on all employees, regardless of their citizenship or immigration status or national origin. And your employer should not use E-Verify when you apply for a job. It can only be used after you accept a job offer. You also have the right to keep your job if you receive a TNC and challenge it in a timely manner. If you do so, your employer cannot fire you unless or until E-Verify issues a final non-confirmation. Your employer also cannot lower your pay, withhold your pay, reduce your working hours, terminate you, put you on leave, or take away training because you decided to contest the TNC. If your rights are violated, you may be entitled to reinstatement in the job and back pay from the employer. Federal agencies are here to help you with your questions or complaints about how you were treated. For questions about E-Verify, including what steps to take in response to a TNC, and to report employers who do not follow the rules or violate your rights as discussed in this program, you should call the toll-free hotline for U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services the agency within the Department of Homeland Security that is responsible for E-Verify. That number is 1-888-464-4218. To obtain assistance if you've been fired, suspended, or denied a job because of E-Verify, or because you believe that E-Verify is being used in a discriminatory manner, 
you should also contact the Office of Special Counsel for Immigration-Related Unfair Employment Practices in the Civil Rights Division at the U.S. Department of Justice. The number for the worker hotline is 1-800-255-7688. You may also contact the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission if you believe that you've been discriminated against based upon your race, national origin, religion, or other prohibited basis. That number is 1-800-669-4000. We hope this video has provided you with the information you need when it comes to E-Verify. Remember, you have specific rights to protect you and your job, but it is your responsibility to be your own advocate. The rules about how E-Verify can be used may change, so stay informed so you can stand up for your rights. On behalf of the Office for Civil Rights and Civil Liberties at the Department of Homeland Security, Thank you for watching.